Hey, good morning. This is Rich from Tennessee Homestead. How the heck are you? Uh, welcoming me you to our uh, Americana breeding pen, which right now we've got uh, assorted breeds. <laughs> we've got some Americanas and some buffs stuck in here. Uh, basically, these were all brooder buddies. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> they... Uh, Got moved from the tractor into this uh, uh, the other day, so they seem to be settling in real good. Uh, give you a quick, quick little tour. We got a nice window for some added ventilation, and we found that the buffs really like sitting up on that ledge and looking out the window. Uh, they think it's pretty cool. <coughs> got them a nice little perch. Uh, it can accommodate a lot more birds than what we're going to have in this area. Uh, set up their feeders on a little rack uh, to where I can adjust them. Uh, looks like they need to be adjusted a little higher, uh, their water and their feeder. But uh, for right now, that uh, eh, that works. I especially like trying to keep their water up a little bit. Uh, you know, it... Uh, it has a tendency to get pretty nasty if you don't, uh, and eventually there will be no uh, little wires in there, uh, a little baling twine, you know, that expensive stuff. But anyway, this is what she looks like. Uh, this is where uh, we'll be keeping our breeding set uh, of the Americanas. Now, I have not yet built nesting boxes over here yet for them. Um, that'll be going along this wall here. Uh, but, you know, I've got a, I've got a little bit of time on those. And I figure I'm going to go ahead and kind of set up an assembly line of those and, uh, kind of produce them all at once. Uh, the roost seems to work out real well for them. I, I checked on them last night and, uh, they, they really seem to have enjoyed it. Uh, they like the altitude, uh. That's one thing about uh, when you set up your roost, um, we still do have to come in here and take a planer, and I'm going to, uh, because these boards are at an angle, they got kind of a sharp edge, and I'm going to bring in my little hand planer and kind of round that out for them. But all in all, uh, birds are doing real well. They're liking their new digs. Um, a lot of scratching and pecking can go on here. So uh, that that keeps them pretty happy. But uh, got, got a good looking set of birds in here. Um, so we're real pleased with them. They're growing out good. Uh, hopefully here in a few months we'll start uh, getting some eggs out of them. And then shortly after that we'll be uh, going ahead and breeding and uh, figuring out which ones we're going to use as our breeders and, and put them out here. We have several roos. Uh, we had bought what was supposed to be a pullet run of hens. Uh, turns out there was a couple of roos in there. But we had also bought a couple of roos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that, uh, uh, you know, is is all of that. Now, on the flip side, and Cherish, you can eat your heart out on this one, our Buff Orbingtons, we had bought... Uh, a pullet run, assuming that you always get at least one rooster or so out of it. We got zero roosters out of that pullet run. Whoever sexed those chickens did a did an absolutely wonderful job. Uh, no, excuse me, it wasn't even a pullet run. It was a straight run. Uh, so we assumed uh, to get a roo or two out of it, and we got nothing but hens. Uh. <laughs> so, not a good thing. Uh, I, I kept having hopes for this one there at the feeder uh, that we might that one might develop as a roo, but uh, nah, it looks to be a hen also. So anyway, that's kind of where all that is. And uh, let me kind of walk you outside here. Uh, Got to put a different latch on this thing here. Get on the other side of this uh, gate from them. Uh, simple little latch. Anyway, uh, this here, folks, is uh, barnwood. 
I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, that's all it is. Uh, three wood. The chicken wire uh, is uh, from stuff we had laying around here. Uh, and uh, I had a, a neighbor stop by and it was asking me, well, why didn't you just, instead of overlapping this chicken wire, you can see the little ties there, why didn't you just cut it off? Well, here's the reason. <coughs> if you will look at the distance between the door and this pole here, it's pretty thin. So I would virtually be taking a, a 36 inch piece of chicken wire and cutting it in a third to run it on there. I don't usually do that kind of thing. And here's the reason why. I doubt that this is going to be uh, our permanent setup for these chickens. Uh, we have plans to move it all into one building um, located over by our summer coop and uh, to give them more outdoor run and so forth. Uh, gonna have to excuse me here, I'm being chewed on by a horse fly. Uh, so, with that being said, if I had cut, and this is where uh, if you use a little forethought in, in setting these things up, if I had to cut this, I would have a little sniglet piece of chicken wire, you know, about uh, nine foot of it. That would, when I took this coop out, would end up in a trash can. Instead, I'll pull the staples. I will cut the tabs, and I will roll it back up, and I will still have a nine, ten foot piece of usable 36 inch chicken wire. Uh, most all this chicken wire, matter of fact, all this chicken wire used on this pen is all used stuff. Came out of an old coop. So, if you kind of use a little forethought. Um, you know, if you're building something like this and you know for sure that this probably is not going to be permanent, then don't get nuts with trimming up the chicken wire. Um, you know, that way you can save it and use it again on another day. Now, the windows there, we did those uh, quite a while back. Uh, and now that's all trimmed and, and so forth. But for what we're doing here, most all of this could be used in another coop somewhere else. Uh, as you can tell, just plain Jane, uh, barn wood, built the door. Uh, and before I get a bunch of critiquing on my construction techniques, uh, I was in a hurry, folks. But uh, it worked. And it's good, solid, and square, so that's that's all that really matters. And, you know, I... You know, I pulled the chickens and found out that, you know, they had absolutely zero problem with it. So, as long as they're happy, I'm happy. Speaking of happy chickens, <laughs> one of the things that you'll find in dealing with chickens is a lot of their uh, production can be lost due to disruption of their normal routine. Now, here's the case in point. We have... Uh, transitioned our main flock from free range into uh, garden mode as we call it around here to where these chickens not these particular because these guys have actually been out not necessarily free ranging but they have been in a tractor and as soon as I get the hole cut over here in the area of those feeders uh, and get the poly wire fence put up they'll be these guys will be back outside too but I figured a few days, uh, you know, uh, confinement's not going to kill them. One, I usually like to, any chickens, when I move them into a coop, I want to get them into the coop for about five days and let them become very accustomed to it before I let them into the great outdoors so that they know where to come back to. They are really enjoying the dirt underneath, underneath them for you know, their little dirt baths. They kind of like it. But anyway, back to the production. When we transition the chickens from the normal summer mode uh, and, and fall and, 
and early spring uh, of free ranging where they just run the place to uh, being in a poly uh, poly wire uh, poly fencing poultry fencing uh, which they have a large area which we've expanded out now uh, I'll do a little video on that so they got a lot of room to to roam but still they're confined and they know they're confined uh, when that initially happens, you'll see production drop. <coughs> it is <coughs> a happy chicken is a productive chicken. Uh, <coughs> an unhappy chicken, not so much. So you kind of keep those things in mind uh, when you're when you're doing those kind of things. Uh, understand that chickens are not real crazy about you know, changes. You know they're really a, a bird of habit. <coughs> so. When you make little changes in their lifestyle, uh, they respond by dropping production. Uh, when they're stressed out, they drop production. Uh, if you're changing even feeds, I've seen them drop production with a change of feed. So consistency, yes, you're my buddy, I know. Yes, I think the world of you too. Yep, sure do. Uh, these are sweethearts. Uh, because they were in a tractor, they got visited a lot. Uh, uh, a lot of hand feeding went on and things of that nature with them, giving them a little special treats. So, but a uh, good looking set of birds. Uh, I think they'll do very well. The buffs uh, will eventually be rejoining. Uh, <laughs> if I can lay my hands on a rooster, we'll be going into the next 10 going in. So, but anyway, uh, you know, kind of some tips. Hang your feeders and waters. Uh, uh, these, like I said, right now are too low. As you can see, they should be about the height of the chicken's back, making them reach forward a little bit, uh, which the water is the other one I need to get in there and get it adjusted. But uh, so, you know, make sure you got those adjusted right. It, it, it keeps their water and their food cleaner. Uh, when you're dealing with a perch, high is good. Uh, chickens love high. Uh, just be careful of where, how high you go with it because they'll sit on that top perch going, now where can I go from here? And believe me, it doesn't take them long to figure out, I think if I really flap my wings, I can get right over the top of this thing. Uh, and then you're out here putting a lid on it, uh, which I'm really not wanting to do because uh, this one here is, uh, is definitely temporary. It's just going to be for a few months. So, anyway, that is all that. Um, like I said, consistency, changes in chicken life, uh, drops production. You can, you can build stuff like this cheaply, folks. Uh, I am probably into outlay on this thing. Uh, let me see. Nothing. Uh, <laughs> this is all stuff we had laying around. Uh, and if you kind of use your head a little bit and when you're putting things together uh, keep in mind uh, if this is not going to be a forever situation maybe I should uh, conserve my materials to where these things could be taken down and reused somewhere else if you do that you know you uh, you end up a little ahead of the game alrighty so anyway, this is one of our breeding coops. This is going to be for the Americanas. I think the wife said she was going to, uh, I believe, paint up a sign and, and hang you know, somewhere up in there. Uh, distinguishing this as being the, uh, the Americanas low shack. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, it turned out okay. Uh, and like I said, zero cost, little labor. Well, quite a bit of labor, but... Uh, especially when uh, these have dirt floors. I like the dirt floor for the chickens. Uh, it gives them a good place to dirt bath. Uh, as you can see, they're really taking advantage of it. Uh, but it requires some excavation work. You have to go around the edge of the, the uh, pen, go down about a foot, and a foot out, and put a trench in so that you can use like a welded wire, something similar to that, although if you're going to do it on a permanent basis, uh, to be honest with you, I would use concrete. Uh, 
and if this ever was to become a permanent coop, I would probably concrete in uh, that area because that welded wire underground will eventually rust and become useless. But you put it uh, about a foot deep and coming out about one foot, bend it in a 90 degree angle, and that way no matter how far down the chickens dig, they're going to run into wire. Now you do the same thing on the exterior perimeter of your coop and you do the same thing, you, you turn, but this time you turn it out away from the coop. And that will deter any little bandits like possums and raccoons and so forth from trying to burrow underneath your wire because they'll dig down quite a ways and all of a sudden run into wire and they'll dig a little deeper and, and eventually they can't dig deeper because they've ran into more wire. Okay, it's a pretty good system. Uh, but here again, this one is temporary because I use the standard welded wire. If you're looking for something more permanent, uh, my suggestion would be concrete. Put a concrete pudding around. You can get by with a dirt floor as long as you have a big enough concrete pudding that uh, predators are not going to dig under it. And, uh, but you can also extend your life. They make this uh, chicken wire like that, the welded wire, uh, and vinyl coated which would uh, definitely aid into the lifetime of it. Uh, so, those are some ideas. Uh, it's what I did. Oh, take that back. It wasn't totally free. I did buy a new latch for it. But that I did do. I think that was like, I don't know, four bucks. So, anyway, if you use your head, you can do this on the cheap. Uh, you know, look around, folks. You'll find... Uh, a lot of times you'll see farms that have a big pile of wood where they tore down an old building and if you go up and say, hey, can I haul that off for you? They'll say, yeah, because <laughs> he doesn't want to have to stack it all up and burn it. So, and yeah, you'll probably end up burning half of it because it's worthless, uh, but you can also come out of it with some decent wood that you can rip down and use for, like, doors. Okay? So, hope this helps. Uh, the Americanas are in their new home and seem to love it. So... Uh, the buffs will be here too terribly much longer, and they're going to get moved into their own uh, coop. And, uh, yeah, it's going along pretty well. Okay, well, that's all from here today with, from Tennessee Homestead. Hope this finds you having a blessed day and uh, enjoying yourself. Yeah, you all have a good day. Oh, by the way, any questions, uh, throw them down there in the comments section. i uh, be happy to answer them for you to the best of my ability. I can tell you what I do, and whether or not that works is uh, uh, always, uh, you know, as I always say, every homestead and every farm is different. Uh, what works for me may not work for you, but, uh, you know, some of these basic things, like don't go out buying a bunch of new wood to build a small little chicken coop. It's crazy. You know, you can get stuff, uh, you can get stuff for free uh, if you just look around a little bit. Uh, same thing with a lot of your waters and I mean, those look real nice. They're nice, clean. Well, Peter needs to be clean. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was part of a deal where I bought a bunch of chicken supplies uh, and waters and so forth. A lot of them, the big five-gallon waters and large feeders, which we have over in the summer coop right now and in the main coop. Uh, but, uh, you know, pick all that up for around 20-some-odd bucks. So um, I think those two feeders there would... Uh, knock out half of the $20 bill alone. So, hopefully you can uh, take some of this and put it to use. And uh, y'all have a great day.